So this is a brief look at uh, United States pre-cancel stamps. <clears throat> uh, this was really in honor of Dan, who was always bringing up his perfins, which, <laughs> and he knows a lot about them. So it is a lot of fun when he does it. But uh, another odd corner of collecting is pre-canceled stamps. And these are just some from the United States. <clears throat> what is a pre-cancel? Well, it's one that the post office uh, won't have to cancel when it enters the mail system. It can be pre-canceled either by the sending agency if they have an arrangement with the local post office, or it can be pre-canceled by the Bureau of Engraving and Printing uh, in Washington. These things date back to 1887. So it is an old concept. Any one stamp can be pre-canceled with an almost infinite variety of locations, but the number of bureau pre-cancels is much more constricted. Uh, here's just an example of two stamps, but with many, many pre-cancels. And I could have thrown 50 more for the, uh, the eight center there. What do you mean by bureau pre-cancels? Uh, okay, let, let me go one more slide here. These are bureau pre-cancels, meaning that these pre-canceled, uh, th these cancellations are put on the stamp before they're sent out to be used. Only certain locations have them and they look a certain way. Non-bureau pre-cancels can vary enormously because you make an agreement with your enterprise with the local post office to get the lower rate for having pre-canceled the stamps. And as long as it's comprehensible uh, to the post office, they will accept it. I'm not gonna do much with non-bureaus except incidentally. You can see how uh, the bureau pre-cancels, uh, this is from the pre-cancel stamp society catalog, uh, they all look about the same, but when you try to get a hard and fast rule, you find, well, it looks like they all have lines above and below. Well, they do. It looks like they're all two lines uh, in length, no more, but then look at New Orleans, actually it's three there. Uh, the distances between the words, it looks like it's all capitals, but then you look closely and a few times it's upper and lower case. It looks like it's always a state abbreviation, but then you look at Maine, it's not. So you really can't make too many rules about it. However, <clears throat> the pre-cancel stamp society assures me that this is the full gamut of types, not of locations, but of types of bureau pre-cancels. Some people get into, uh, not many I hope, get into uh, actually measuring the space between the words, between the words and a line or something like that, how wide. That is a level of uh, philately I have no aspirations to attain. I, I think that is <laughs> twiddling one's thumbs. Uh, I never will ascend to that level or descend if that's the word. Here's a on. Roger, on the on the uh, spacing of uh, there, I noticed some gaps in numbers, like uh, thirty uh, four through forty. Oh, uh, thank you, Fred. Saying. I I should have explained. Those numbers are given by the pre council society. They would not be on the stamp. That's the society's way of categorizing these oh. cancels. Thank you. That's a very good point. They would not thank be you. on the stamp. Interesting that I see that no abbreviation for the state for Augusta, but two lines down Portland, they are abbreviating Maine. I wonder why. So, okay, you've gone even further than I have already, Steve. That's, <laughs> I yeah, I just don't know. I don't, but uh, this is the selection that the catalog uses to, to codify uh, Again, I, I say I'm not that interested in going much further than realizing there are bureau pre-cancels, which are pretty much uniform, and there are non-bureau, which can vary wildly. Uh, the other thing about pre-cancels that is interesting, uh, most of them, if you get a 
big pile of them and start wading through it, you'll find that the vast majority are from Detroit or Chicago or New York. Understandably, that's where mail was coming from. But these are non-bureau, or many of these are non-bureau. And you get places like Mexico, Missouri. Has anyone ever heard of or been to Mexico, Missouri? Um, Marty, South Dakota. Marty, South That's Dakota. Good that sounds like someone's name. <laughs> Probably, you know, population five or something. Right. Or, and the next one is one that caught right. my eye. Holton, Kansas. So uh, randomly, I just chose Holton to say, well, what? What caused pre-cancels? I mean, obviously there have to be an awful lot of these stamps in use if you're gonna to go to the trouble to pre-cancel them. So what was in Holton, Kansas that, and, and what is Holton, Kansas? I went online to Wikipedia, there's a small entry talking about its geography, its small population, about 3000, and it hasn't varied much over the years. It's in Jackson County, if you want to know that. But there was nothing in there about commerce that would give me any clue as to why something in Holton, Kansas had pre-cancels. So uh, uncharacteristically, I contacted the Chamber of Commerce in Holton, Kansas, uh, thinking they would just brush me off and say, you know, this guy's got a problem. I mean, we don't know what, why these things are here, but uh, we don't worry about it. Actually, and this is one of the great things about this hobby. They went out of their way. They looked up in the historical society. They've been writing me back and forth about various possibilities, so on and so forth. And it turns out, this is a letter they wrote. This might have been from the gossip printery. They published the philatelic gossip, which had an extensive mailing list. Now, this is only a guess on my part. This is from Anna Wilhelm in Holton. She also notes that there was a newspaper there, the Jackson County Clipper, and there was an industrial company there as well. So I, she also gave me these links and I went to them and this is the prime suspect. Has anyone heard of the weekly philatelic gossip? It was a magazine issued in Holton. Clearly there was some single enthusiast in Holton about the stamp collecting world and he started publishing on it. And uh, we've gone back and forth, Holton and I now with many emails and for all the work they've done for me, all I had to do was promise to root for the Kansas Jayhawks in the NCAA <laughs> tournament. <laughs> so I think it's a great deal. Going back, you, you will also, this is kind of trivial. This is sort of life is random. You will once in a while get selvage. You'll get selvage with uh, plate numbers on it. And on the right, you'll see a stamp that not only is pre-canceled, but it got some kind of cancellation anyway. Nothing wrong with that, I suppose, but the idea was to save work at the post office. Uh, incidentally, the process of canceling a stamp, I, for those who worked at a post office, is really a trivial thing compared to sorting and, of course, actual delivery. So I don't see why the post office is willing to give a discount for pre-canceled stuff very often. Uh, and I, I pondered this and I've come to the conclusion, the only reason they do it is that they get a massive amount of stuff that all looks about the same. And they can just check one and see if it has the correct postage. And if it does, they can move the whole pylon right away. Eliminating the step of canceling at a post office is, that's less than 1% of the work in delivering a letter. So. It's the question is still moot as far as I'm concerned. So um, is it still done? Do, are are pre cancels still available now? I, I should have said that I'm limiting this to 54 and earlier. It is done. There are stamps that are called pre pre canceled later on in the Scott catalog, but they are. You'll see it on stamps. It'll say like bulk rate pre sort. Mm -hmm. You'll see it on a mail you might get from uh, charities or something like that. And, and that is 
not so much pre-canceled as indicating that this mail goes through at a cheaper rate. And it doesn't say, need to be can it doesn't need to be canceled. Exactly. It will not right. be canceled. Exactly. Right. It'll, go, it'll go right to the sorting. And there, if you get the pre-sort, then the company that mails the item has done a lot of work for the post office. That's great. Mm -hmm. That's great. And I can see giving a discount to that. But well, I won't repeat myself on the otherwise. So uh pre-cancels uh sometimes in fact very often will be upside down on stamps it seems to make no difference whatsoever but the pre-cancel society insists that if the stamp was pre-canceled by the bureau of engraving and printing it never was upside down so uh, once in a while late in the use of these pre-54 you'll see a date is added to the pre-cancel what that is for, I'm not exactly sure. It started around the time U.S. entered World War II. But uh, it's, again, some kind of control system. But exactly who it suits, it might be the mailing company more than anything else. A form of inventory control, perhaps? I really Wait don't a minute. know. There's, there's more than just a date there. Over right, the, the yes, PA gonna, with SRC? Yes, I'm going to get to that right now. Thank you. Can anyone tell me what these, as uh, Alan pointed out, these initials on the stamps? Yes. The second one is uh, Sears, Roebuck and Company. The other one is um, uh, a big um, firm. They were sent out. Montgomery lots of, lots Ward. Of You're Mont absolutely yes, right. Absolutely yeah. right. <laughs> I puzzled and puzzled for about a week over this. If the stamps were used on envelopes, that were not from those two companies. They weren't re recognized as being valid postage. Those yes. stamps were only those stamps were only for bulk mailings. Oh. Exactly. If someone, if someone, I'm going to use the word fancy word hijack the stamps and use it for their personal postage. So it's it serves the same purpose as a perfect. Yes. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it, exactly. Anyway, this is the distribution center in Albany for Montgomery Ward. And if wow. I go back here, you see it's pre-canceled in Albany. This is one of Sears many, many. This is Sears Robic in Chicago. And if I go back, you see it's pre-canceled in Chicago. But you're absolutely right. Thank you, Stanley. That was, I, I should have called you uh, a month ago. <laughs> 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 uh, Anyway, it's, it's all part of the hobby. Uh, the pre-cancel on format stamps of this format always runs across the short uh, dimension. So if the stamp like these two is uh, printed in what I guess they call landscape format now, uh, you'll get the pre-cancel going this way. Again, it makes no difference to the post office. Uh, these pre-cancel stamps are almost always worth about nothing. Even this early one uh, has a value of only a couple of bucks. This goes back to about uh, 1912. And that would be if my dog hadn't chewed it up. But uh, <laughs> this is the catalog of pre-cancel. They have another catalog. Uh, this one deals only with bureau pre-cancels, but there is another one. The other one is sort of open-ended because people keep finding places that had these things. Uh, and again, this is in honor of our president, Dan. You will often find pre-cancels that are also perfect. Mm -hmm. No reason why they can't be. And to wrap it up, here is my favorite of all the ones I've come across. It's got a pre-cancel, which is upside down. It's also perfect. And furthermore, it's not on a regular issue, but on a commemorative, the 1932 Washington mm -hmm. commemorative. 